These are commodities, the same as gold or oil. I bought out every store in the area over the last couple of weeks. And as lazy parents become more desperate, I will sell them at an enormous profit. What economic lessons can we learn from The Office? In this video, we see how Dwight capitalizes on demand and supply forces when he decides to sell princess unicorn dolls. I'm joined by Dan Keister from Kansas State University. We have a discussion after we watch the clip, and let's watch the clip together. Every year I do research to determine which toy will be the most popular of the Christmas season. This year, it's a doll, half girl, half unicorn. Catchphrase, my horn can pierce the sky. Pathetic. I bought out every store in the area over the last couple of weeks. And as lazy parents become more desperate, I will sell them at an enormous profit. Isn't that right, princess? 120, 180, 200. All right. Oh, thank you so much. Fa la 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 ka-ching. If anything ever happened to you, I would be very angry at myself for not doing all that I could do. I know I drink. Have you ever heard of this doll, Princess Unicorn? I promised my daughter, Daryl, look, I, I need the doll. I need the doll. I, I, I'm begging you. I just, I need it more than anything in the world. I need this doll. Daryl, man, I need this doll. Okay, all right, man. Don't cry. Just, it's, it's cool. I'll let you get it for 400. Fantastic, uh, fantastic clip. So Dwight's figured out how to make a little bit of money on this. So what, uh, I'll, you, you could start with this. What, what is this, what is this clip showing us? Why, why are we showing this clip? Yeah, I, I mean, I loved it. And this is obviously, we're getting ready first day of class here at K-State tomorrow for full disclosure. Um, and we'll get into this one pretty quickly uh, as we start to cover supply and demand. And it, it really works on a lot of different levels. I mean, obviously, we talk about demand determinants. Students can, uh, I will always, I do things very old-fashioned. I write up sheets of paper and divide them into groups and give them a um, chance to, to um, kind of um, ponder these things as a group, think, pair, share type of stuff, and um, let them answer some pretty specific questions. And I say, is this a shift in demand or is this a shift in supply? what determinant is being demonstrated here and they can do either future expected price or, you know, seasonal shifts, you know, uh, change in tastes and preferences. So it, hopefully they're, they're thinking about this and they're being creative about it. The other thing I really love about the clip is I'll ask them to draw the supply and demand curve and show what happens to the price and the quantity of the dolls as Christmas approaches. And I'll tell them if you're really thinking outside the box, you may get a really different looking graph. Very few students get this, but they have the perfectly inelastic supply because of the very short run nature of the market before Christmas. There's no chance to get more dolls in there in the Scranton area. And so occasionally, you know, I'll get a couple of students that draw that vertical supply function um, and shows why the price is at such a, uh, a premium. Um, and we can relate that like tonight, Kansas and Kansas State are playing at basketball. Okay, well, yeah. Kansas State's really good right now compared to what everybody expected. Kansas is always good. We still only have 13,000, 14,000 seats in Bramwich Coliseum. That, that stadium doesn't grow just because the team's okay. gotten better. So yes. the price is at a premium because of that perfectly elastic supply. It's one of my favorite clips for that very reason. You can do it at a very basic level, but then you can take it to the next level and talk about uh, a more advanced concept of uh, elasticity of supply. Uh, and elasticity of demand, you know, even though it's not quite as related here, uh, it kind of introduces that concept. So uh, the students like it. It's funny. It, it's quick. Obviously, as we yep. just saw, uh, it kind of hits all the all the all the points that we're trying to get across with these different different clubs. Yeah. What I what I love about this. So first of all, though, you could think about it being there's a fixed supply of the dolls, and then Christmas comes along, and all of a sudden demand spikes and the price goes up. Um, you know, is in the long run, of course, you can make more dolls, but in that short time, you can't. Uh, another thing, and I don't know, I'm, I'm guessing a few of your students would get this. In some ways, Dwight lowers the supply of dolls on the available market. I mean, I guess if he's selling them all, perhaps not, but Dwight becomes the monopolist here. Yeah. And essentially, 
Dwight is facing the monopolist demand curve because he's yes. bought up all of them in the area. And he's the reason to, uh, and then he's charging these significant rents on, on the pricing, but uh, pretty fascinating. Uh, I mean, in some ways it also shows entrepreneurship, which I like. Uh, yeah. But the uh, other part, so on these, like for dolls like these, so if this is at a Walmart, they probably have, they are probably pricing dolls that are in a shortage at a suboptimal low price. It, just like this past year, they were probably, you know, the past couple of years, I don't know if you're a video gamer at all, but the PlayStation 5 has been incredibly tough to get when it first came out. And it sold, you know, selling for $500. Uh, on the resale market, it was instantly, you know, $800, $900, $1,000. Walmarts weren't doing that. Probably right. because there's this social pressure that if they are charging more, you know, and they're a private business, but there's the social pressure against price gouging. That they it's a repeated game, to. right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so pretty, pretty cool examples uh, from, yeah, one minute clip. So uh, yeah, I mean, this, you know, we have a separate clip we use for arbitrage, but you could certainly discuss arbitrage here. Um, monopoly power, as you mentioned. I mean, it's it's yeah. it, it it and this is kind of the point of why we ended up doing the website is that there are so many incredibly vibrant examples from this show and we keep finding more uh that are that are easy to uh relate to students so yeah i, I like this one a lot and we're putting a link you can click to it's economics of the office.com link is in the description of course i don't know that it's that difficult to write out economics of the office.com but if it is you can go through and just click that, uh, click that below. So, and I'll say, Matt, if anybody's so um, interested, um, I, I just I'm trying to get this this particular YouTube clip to 2,000 views. I think we're over 1,500 now. K State did a. They came into my class, I guess, in uh, last spring, and uh, went to several classes, and they did a little one minute, 45 second video about this entire project. And that particular clip was actually one of the features of that. So maybe if we can include that, we'll throw. Yeah, we'll absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm really uh, proud of that. That, is, that, that will be thing. in the description for everybody. And thank you for watching, and a big thanks to Dan Keister from Kansas State University for joining for that conversation. If you'd like to learn more economics in a fun way, I love making economics accessible, often using pop culture like with The Office or Curb Your Enthusiasm, Star Wars, Friends. Yeah, you name it. Please subscribe and uh, would really appreciate it also if you'd like the video. And to everybody out there, we'll see you in the next video.